30. The word of the Lord came again unto me, saying, Son of man, prophesy and say, Thus saith the Lord God, How will ye? Woe worth the day, for the day is near. Even the day of the Lord is near. A cloudy day. It shall be the time of the heathen. Zephaniah 1, 14-18 And the sword shall come upon Egypt, and great pain shall be in Ethiopia, when the slain shall fall in Egypt, and they shall take away her multitude, and her foundation shall be broken down. Ethiopia and Libya and Lydia and all the mingled people and Chub, the men of the land that the men of the land that is in league shall fall with them by the sword. Now it speaks of a the sword. In the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ, he carries a sword. Thus saith the Lord God, they also that uphold Egypt shall fall, those that stick up for Egypt. Those who are with Egypt, and the pride of her power, pride, that's not of God, shall come down. Those that are proud, God will bring down. For the, from the Tower of Sa'i, we read that in the previous chapter, shall they fall in it by the sword, saith Lord God. <clears throat> and they shall be desolate in the midst of the countries. That are desolate, and her city shall be in the midst of the cities that are wasted, this utter annihilation. And they shall know that I am the Lord by other destruction. We've talked this over and over. This is not the time to know the Lord. When I have set a fire in Egypt, when all her helpers shall be destroyed, and the helpers would be uh, armies that would help her, uh, people that would give her food and take care of her. Anybody that gives her any aid. In that day shall me messengers go forth from me in ships to make the careless Ethiopians afraid. And great pain shall come upon them as in the day of Egypt. For lo, it cometh. Thus saith the Lord God, I will also make the multitude of Egypt to cease by the hand of the Nebuchadnezzar king of Babylon. He and his people with him, the terrible of the nations, shall be brought to destroy the land. See, we're continuing from chapter 29. And they shall draw their swords against Egypt and fill the land with the slain. Now we're talking about swords of an army. I believe verses 1 through what we've read so far is, Maybe the second advent of the Lord Jesus Christ. Now we're going back into what chapter 29 is speaking about. With Babylon coming and destroying. I will make the rivers dry. That would be the Nile River and the areas thereof. And sell the land into the hand of the wicked. I will make the land waste. And all that is therein. By the hands of strangers. I the Lord have spoken it. And selling the land, if you were to apply that today, that land over there is, is all nations are over there digging, museums, trying to find artifacts, trying to, and they built the dam over there where they had to move the idols and stuff like that, and they have to build up water because it's lacking. Thus saith the Lord God, I will also destroy the idols. They're all over the place over there. You know what? Those idols of the Egyptians today are all over the world in museums. And I will cause their images to cease out of Noth. And there shall be no more a prince of the land of Egypt. I believe there was a movie. And I will put a fear in the land of Egypt. I will make Pathros desolate. I will set a fire in Zoan. And will execute judgments in No. Now No here is a city. And I will pour my fury upon sin. There is a city called No. And there is a city called Sin. Now if only the Christian would get these two cities lodged in his life. No sin. And you would be perfect. 
if you can get yourself into the city of no sin, too many people will say no to God and go dwell in sin. Exodus 17, 1. In the strength of Egypt, and I will cut off the multitudes of no. I will set fire in Egypt. Sin shall have great pain. There's a lesson, there's a message here with these cities called no sin. And no shall be rent asunder. Noth shall be distressed. Noth shall have distresses daily. The younger men of Avon and all and of Pibish shall fall by the sword, and these cities shall go into captivity. And Tephahasis also the day shall be darkened, like in the second advent with that cloud, when I shall break there the yokes of Egypt and the pomp. That's you know the big parade and a big poof of. You know, you want to see a pomp in America when after election day in January when they when they put the president. What a big pomp is made. What all expenses is made for a great dinner and thank it all the tax. No, you don't thank all the taxpayers that put him in office. They thank all the rich paper people. That's a pomp. When you see, you know, royalty, you know, the, the things that, you know, England, all they do for the queen and the king and all that, and all the dresses and horses, and that's a pomp. Of her strength shall cease in her. As for her, a cloud shall cover her. Pay attention to clouds in the Bible. They're very important. Shall cover her. And her daughters shall go into captivity. Thus will I execute judgments in Egypt. They shall know that I am the Lord and again and again and again. This is not the time to know the Lord with judgment. The time to know the Lord is to put your sins judged under the blood of the Lord Jesus Christ at Calvary. That's the time to know the Lord. Now, next passage is here. It gets gets second advent. It came to pass. Now, remember, it don't it don't go all the way. You can't press a type 100%. Nebuchadnezzar is a type of, of Satan. He's a type of Antichrist. But guess what? He got right. He got saved. It came to pass in the eleventh year, in the first month of the seventh day of the month, dated, that the word of the Lord came unto me, saying, Inspiration, Son of man, I have broken the arm of Pharaoh. It's the military. But of the Antichrist, Job 38, 15, Zechariah 11, 12, 1 Kings 13, 1. 1228, Jeremiah 4825, Psalms 1015, Psalms 3717. And remember we talked about 29 about Pharaoh the king of Egypt, the dragon. And lo, it shall not be bound up to be healed. Antichrist gets healed. He resurrects. Now he may walk around with an eye patch and maybe a, a his arm inside his vest like certain army people have had their pictures taken it shall not be bound up to be healed to put a roller to bind it some kind of first aid thing to make it strong to hold the sword so pharaoh's arm is going to be limp it's going to be dead Therefore, thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against Pharaoh, king of Egypt, and will break his arms, the strong that which was broken. So the weak one and the, and the, and the strong one, God's going to break. And I will cause the sword to fall out of his hand. He can't defend himself. I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations, and will disperse them through the country. Egypt's getting their butt kicked. Egypt in the Bible is a type of world. That world Christian that you fall in love with, that you so dear love and, and you love more than Christ, God is going to kick his butt. And then he's going to kick your butt. I will scatter the Egyptians among the nations and will disperse them through, through the countries. 
I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon. And we're going back to history now. And put my sword in his hand. We talked about that last night. In verses 17 on of chapter 29. Thou shalt not kill. God says, Nebuchadnezzar, yes. Put your hand out. Okay. And you know what I'm trying to say here. Here's my sword of the Lord. Gideon. What do you want me to do with it, Lord? You want me to put it in the sheath? I will put my sword in his hand, but I will break Pharaoh's arm, and he shall groan before him with the groanings of a deadly wounded man. Revelation 13, 2, verse 3, 51, 9, Psalm 74, 2. That is the Antichrist. We're reading for Ezekiel, future. We're reading today, historical. And yet, we're reading future. But I will, uh, I will strengthen the arms of the king of Babylon, his armies, and the arms of Pharaoh shall fall down. Ten little, nine little, eight little Egyptians, seven little, six little, five little Egyptians, four little, three little, I mean will fall down and they shall know that I am the Lord. When they look up in hell and say, oh, what happened to us? And I shall put my sword into the hand of the king of Babylon, and he shall stretch it out over upon the land of Egypt. He's not putting that, he's not giving that sword in honor to the king of Babylon. This ain't the sword that the battle's over. I mean, when battles in the, in the Civil War in America were fought and, and given up, the commander would bring of the losing army. He would bring his sword to the, to the winning army as an honor. God is handing his sword over to the king of Babylon. The king of Babylon says, you want me to put it in the sheath? He says, no, I want you to keep it out. I want you to use it. This is the one that we read about in Jeremiah that God said, this is my servant. I want you to get Judah and Jerusalem. And now I want you, you, you ain't finished. I want you to go get Tyre. And I want you to go get Egypt. And I'll give you Egypt because you didn't get no money from Tyre. And I will scatter the Egyptians. I will scatter. They're going to run. Pharaoh can't fight a fight. And he looks around and says, sees his army gone among the nations and disperse them among the countries. And they shall know that I am the Lord after they've been defeated. These people learned the Lord too long, uh, too late. They learned the Lord after they've been defeated. You know, sometimes when you got to get saved, you got to get saved when you've been defeated. And God has broken your life down so much that there's only thing yet but Calvary or death. Many people, they come to Calvary, and they're at that point. They're at death. There is nothing else but death, but there is the light of the cross. At that point in your life, you need to turn to the Lord Jesus Christ. And at that point, you need to know God at that point. Don't walk away from Calvary and find out who the Lord is. You grab that lamb. The Lamb of God, which, which take away the sin of the world, and you hold on to that Lamb, you plead that Lamb, you guide that Lamb, you take everything about that Lamb of God. Because if you leave that Lamb behind, you're going to meet the fierce, aggravating, angry Lion of God, and you're not going to put your arms around them. He's going to bust your bones. And then in, in the lake of fire, you'll be saying, oh, that's the Lord, that's the God. And there it's too late. But you'll know who the Lord is. Imagine an atheist saying, Oh, I don't believe in God. One day you will. An agnostic. Well, I'm not really sure there's a God. In the lake of fire, you will be 100% sure. A Roman Catholic. Well, Mary and the Pope. You'll, in the lake of fire, realize Mary and the Pope are nobody. But that is God. That is the Lord Jesus Christ. And you don't eat them and you don't drink them. And I can go on with all the religions. 30 chapters, 
if you want to point something to today in 2015 is you better know the Lord he is God by the right side of Calvary and not by the wrong side of the lake of fire which burneth forever we are studying we've been studying we are looking at historical events we are looking to future events and it keeps saying the word of the Lord came unto me and the word of the Lord came unto me how can Ezekiel write out of his own mind out of his own pen things that have been written in 66 books and books that haven't been even written yet that Ezekiel has never seen and don't even know they're going to be to be I quoted to you out of Zechariah I've given you illustrations and Psalms and Ezekiel's never heard of Revelation the Bible is written by man. Yes, it does. It says right here. He says, and it came, uh, the Son of Man, no, wait. and the word of the Lord came unto me again, saying, God spoke to Ezekiel, and he wrote it down. Yes, he wrote it. Man is the pen, and the Holy Spirit is the ink. And when you talk about the Lord Jesus Christ, you've got red ink. 